navigate to blackmagicdesign.com. Find the product area. Select DaVinci Resolve. Click Learn More. Find the download button and hit it. There's two versions, a paid version and a free version. Select the free version for your operating system. Enter your name, your email address, phone number, and address information. Then hit register and download. Once the download is complete, you're ready to install DaVinci Resolve. Open the zip file and select the executable for installation. Select the normal installation procedure using all the defaults. When setup is completed, hit the finish button. Find the shortcut on your desktop and use it to start DaVinci Resolve. Enable the firewall three times. Once running, you'll enter the project manager. The project manager allows you to list your projects, either by thumbnails or as by a list. This is a list of the current projects in the project database. You can create other project databases for multiple projects in this area. Just select the button at the bottom. You can create or open other projects in your project database. For now, we'll just start with the default project. For this set of videos, we'll be recreating a previous project of mine. It uses a set of videos that have a main timeline and a couple of inserts. Also, we'll take a quick look at sound and how to render the video to share. When you first open a project, you may notice that there's a set of tabs at the bottom. These represent tasks. The media task is for bringing in files. The cut tab is for quickly getting video onto your timeline. Edit is used for editing your video. Fusion is for special effects. Color is for color grading. Fairlight deals with sound. And deliver is for rendering and creating your final video. Let's explore the media task. The media task has a representation of your file system. Navigate to where you have your footage. I like to have a folder for footage and one for render. If I have music or sound effects, I also have a sound folder. Once you navigate to your footage, you see them as thumbnails. Drag files down into the media pool. You can explore your media to make sure you're grabbing the right footage. Hovering your mouse and dragging over footage, you can do what is called scrubbing. Scrubbing lets you see the frames, so you know you're really selecting the right one. Using the preview window, you can play, rewind, stop the videos. I created the footage folder with just the video that I need for this video. Next, I just select all the files and bring them into the media pool. Selected files get highlighted. Let's use the cut task to create a rough cut of our video. This footage is the start of our video. Drag it down. Notice a timeline is created for you. The cut task has tools for inserting, appending, and overlaying video. Here's the timeline that got created, and notice this highlight to show it's active. Finally, let's append the other part of our video. Advanced users use the cut task to trim the video. We'll do that in the edit tab. You could also take a quick look at what you got. Hit the space bar to play. It's rough, so let's do an edit. The 
create a task as a set of tools and palettes for editing your video. The Media Gallery, the Media Preview, the Timeline, the Frame Selector, the Timeline Preview, and the Timeline Tools. We're going to trim the edges off our main footage, first by using the Blade tool, and then by simply dragging the edges of our video. Hitting the spacebar to play the video, watch for a good place to cut. Action. So this is a, uh, this is a... Using the frame selector, select that. Using the audio waveform can help you select the right spot. Select the blade tool by using the B key or the toolbar. Click on the frame indicator. Go back to select mode by hitting the A key or selecting the arrow. Select the trimmed footage and hit backspace. You'll want to use backspace instead of delete. Then select the trimmed footage and drag it into place. Hit space bar to test the trimmed footage. So this is a, uh, this is a, a duo art roll, um, a couple preludes by Chopin. And, um, what makes this roll different? Let's trim the other end by using the slider tool. In order to avoid it from sounding robotic. Again, the audio waveform might help here. Drag the frame indicator to the right spot. Hover the cursor over the edge of that strip. Using the frame indicator and snapping, can help be very precise. In order to avoid it from Slide the rest of the footage into place. If you haven't yet, now's a good time to hit save. Hit file save. You'll be prompted for a project name. Type in a project name. And hit save. If you bring up the project manager, you can now see your project has been saved. Next, we'll add some inserts to help better tell our story. Inserts are a good way to help tell your story. This is also called B-roll. For this content, I knew that the dialogue had things that I wanted to capture, so I captured different shots and different images to add as inserts. For example, when the narrator talks about the player piano having code, I knew I had a picture of the piano roll code. When he talks about his player piano roll collection, I had a picture of that as well. Let's add three inserts to enhance the narrator's story. To start, I'm going to rename the video tracks, one as the main and one for inserts. This is just to keep things organized. Let's find the place to put our piano roll code in. Um, it has coding on it that tells the piano how loud or soft to play at different points in the music. Found it by scrubbing and playing the timeline. Position the timeline marker at where you want the footage to begin. Drag the new footage into the insert track at the timeline marker. Trim or stretch the footage as needed. Snapping tools in the timeline marker can help you position your footage. Um, it has coding on it that tells the piano how loud or soft to play at different points in the music. Since the insert track is above the main track, it replaces the main track footage. Most of the roles that I have just uh, coding for the notes, not dynamics. Such Add the image of the collection of piano rolls. And this is a dual art piano, and it, it has the ability to interpret that and, and perform it. Um, most of the roles that I have are just uh, coding for the notes, not dynamics, such that you have to um, adjust the, the, the loud and softness by hand as it plays in order to avoid 
The narrator discusses the loudness and softness. We have some video of that control. Careful, when we drag this video down, notice it added the audio to the same audio timeline. This is a mistake. Undo that. Now let's lock the audio track so that can't happen again. Now when we drag it, it creates a new audio track for the new footage. This is the right video, but now there's three problems. We don't want the sound. We really don't want the image moving. And we want to highlight the control. Currently, when we select the audio, we also select the video. This is because they're linked. The link selection tool controls this. Turning off link selection allows you to select the audio only. You may have to deselect both first and then reselect it. Now you can delete the audio by itself. Let's change the video so we zoom in and highlight that control. First, we're going to change this from a video to a freeze frame. Select the video, then select Clip Freeze Frame. This will freeze the video on the frame indicated by the timeline marker. Select the video and open the inspector if it's not already open. Use the zoom control and the position X control. Translate the video so it highlights the control more. Once all the adjustments are done, our video is complete. Once all the editing is done, we're ready to create a video. Select the delivery task. The delivery task is actually extremely powerful and can be used to create videos, image sequences, and sound file. We're going to keep it simple and just make a video to upload to YouTube. Select Browse and we can navigate to our render folder to place our video. Once there, we could also select the name of our file. Let's call it Player Piano. Hit Save to update the configuration. One final change, we're going to change the format from QuickTime to MP4. Notice there's a lot of setting. You have a lot of flexibility. Click Add to Render Queue. This adds a reusable job to the render queue. You can select one or more jobs and hit Start Render. This can take a while, but there is a progress percentage to show where it is in the render. Once the render is complete, right click on the job and select Open File Location. There you can find the render. From there, you can upload it to social media or just give it a watch. So this is a, uh, this is a, a duo art roll, uh, a couple preludes by Chopin. This concludes our exploration of DaVinci Resolve.